we are back with another Two Cents episode of Bank Chats, a mini episode of Bank Chats, a, a, a very small, shortened version of Bank Chats, if you will. I am Drew Thomas. With me is Jeff Matavish, as Hello. before. Hey, Hello. Jeff. Hello. And uh, so we sat down today to talk a little bit about subscriptions. And I think we all have some kind of subscription that we currently have signed up for, whether it's uh, streaming, service? streaming services, okay. even even certain apps like weather apps that, you know, you get some that are free, some that you have to pay for. Mm-hmm. There, there's all kinds of different things out there. Car starters and, and different subscriptions you might order like from like stores and things like that. Yeah, Magazines. I mean, if people still read magazines. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you could have a digital magazine. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's News, true. Newspaper. You know? Yeah. News. That's it. Yeah. You know, that's a really good one. Like the newspapers out there that have gone to a digital model Mm -hmm. and you're paying for that digital newspaper to be delivered to your inbox. Are you really reading it? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Maybe you are, maybe you're not. But that's kind of what we're going to talk about today are subscriptions that have sort of gotten lost in the shuffle that you're paying for that you might not necessarily be using. And and that money's being spent whether you're using it or not. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So, you know, I was looking at an NPR article. And um, in that NPR article, uh, they were talking a little bit about subscriptions. They say, on average, about 8% of customers cancel during the months when they're asked to actively renew their subscription. Only 2% of those who cancel are doing so during other months. And I think that that's kind of the key is that, you know, you get a lot of these subscriptions that do this sort of idea of, hey, there's a free trial. Right. And you mm-hmm. get you get your free three months and then we're going to start you know, then your subscription automatically renews. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you have anything like that? Like what do you what do you subscribe to? Streaming services galore. Definitely. Because, yeah. uh, you know, you can't have one app that does it all anymore. No, but, you know, that's true. I'm the same way. I have I have like every streaming service out there, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm paying as much for those as I am for cable, which is sad. I'm probably I mean, seriously, when you add up all those individual like and, and you know, like six ninety nine, seven ninety nine, mm-hmm. two ninety nine, whatever it is. And like you add all that up and all of a sudden it's like spending 70, 80 bucks a month on streaming services. Yeah. You know, yeah. pretty easily. I want to watch this one movie. Well, I got to get out of this app and go to this app. I don't know where it's at. You know. <laughs> yeah. And what gets you is that there are some shows that are available on multiple streaming services and some shows that are only available on one. Yeah. And, the, and and you're you're paying for that one show. Yeah, like yeah. that was a big deal when, when the office left Netflix, I remember that was a big, and friends, it was the office and friends that were, they were both on Netflix at one point that, yeah. and they, they moved to other platforms and people were just losing their mind mm-hmm. over the idea of having to switch to whatever platform they moved to. I can't even remember. I think, I think the office went to HBO max something like that, uh, which is no longer HBO Max. It's now Max because, you know, we can just keep changing names and colors and, oh, yeah. you know, we got to keep people confused. Keep fresh. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. Fresh or confused. See, you say fresh. I say confused. <laughs> so, so is that, is that why you have multiple stream is so you, so you can watch like one show on one thing? Uh, yeah. I mean, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. What other subscriptions do we have? Mm, shopping subscriptions. So, you know, you may have Amazon, you know, for example, Amazon Prime, you pay a subscription to be able to get two day shipping. Mm-hmm. Um, go even further. You know, you have Amazon Music, which is still an Amazon product, but it's a completely <laughs> different uh, subscription, you know? Yeah, that's true. Well, that's true because uh, you get, well, speaking of videos, so you get Prime Video. Mm-hmm. As part of your Amazon subscription for Prime, mm-hmm. but you only get a limited music library as part of your Amazon Prime subscription. If you want the true. full music library, <laughs> you have to get the Amazon Music subscription. True, true. So I think with this article, and and there are a number of articles. There was another article we were looking at from a, a lesser known publication called Techlicious, which I just love the name. It, talking about what do you do whenever you don't realize you're you're paying these these fees? Yeah. Because I think to your point about shopping, if I have a subscription for I don't know coffee beans. Right. I'm getting coffee beans delivered to my front door. Like I recognize that I must have paid for this because it showed up. Mm-hmm. You have something tangible. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Same thing. Like, you know, if you talk about auto pay with like your electric bill or your water bill, like if you don't have water, you know, <laughs> you know, you know that something's your wrong. Your pipes are frozen or you yeah. pay your bill. Yeah. But with these streaming subscriptions, especially and, and, um, Sometimes you you just don't realize you're paying the money. You 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 to your point. You you bought it to watch one show or one movie, and then you forgot about it. Yeah, or or you sign up for that uh, you know ninety nine cents a month you know for a year starter fee, mm-hmm. and then you know you, you don't think about it because you like you said you wanted to watch one show. Yeah, and then um, your year's up, and it's now you know twenty dollars a month. 
Yeah. Yeah. You bring up a good point. I just bought a, I just bought a car about six months ago Mm -hmm. and as part of buying the car, they said, Hey, you get three months of Sirius XM, you know, as a, as a thank you for buying the car. Cause the car came with Sirius XM in it. Sure, right. Sure. And then they said at the end of the three months for an additional $2, we'll ex- we'll double your subscription for $2. You can have six months of, of Sirius XM. And now I'm coming to the point where I'm getting close to that end of the six month. And I'm starting to think about how do I cancel the subscription? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You better you know, start thinking about that early. Yeah. yeah. Cause actually, I I had a relative that tried canceling XM radio and he had a heck of a time. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Because you, I mean, you make a phone call and now you talk to a robot and you can't always get through to an actual person. Yeah. He ended up going to his credit card company and said, you know, Hey, just stop paying, refuse to pay this because I've tried and tried and I can't get through to anybody to, to to cancel this subscription. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. And well, you bring up, credit cards or uh, your statement. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you can look at your bank statement, your credit card statement, and you see these entries on there. Yeah. And that's one way that you could take a look and see what subscriptions you're signed up for that maybe you're not using. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes it's tough to even tell what those descriptions are. You know, when you go down through and you see, you know, $6 and 99 cents, and it's sort of a gobbledygook of letters that if you know what it is, you know what it is. But to the average person, it's, it's not easily decipherable what yeah, it is you're for. Game. Yeah. Yeah. And we have stuff, you know, even for things like computers, like you have to have subscriptions now for things like uh, Microsoft Office. A mm-hmm. lot of times you have a subscription yeah. or if you have a, a gaming system like an Xbox or a PS5, you might have a subscription to be able to just play games online. Yeah. You the, know? the physical disc is uh, going extinct. Yeah. Yeah. I remember <laughs> whenever I was a kid, you actually had friends come over and physically sit in the room with you and play video games. I now know, now you amazing. can't even yeah. do that half the time anymore. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But those are the kinds of things that, that I think we're talking about, too, is this idea that, OK, you you maybe you were a gamer three years ago, but you got a different job. You, you don't have the time. You, you had kids. Now you you have other interests, but you're still paying that subscription fee mm-hmm. to be able to play that video game online, even though you haven't picked up a controller in a year and a half. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about how to cancel subscriptions that you're no longer using. OK. Yeah. Because one of the things that I was reading here is that that's not always easy. You absolutely cannot always figure out exactly where your subscription is is housed. Let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. I think if you go to like to your, to your Apple iPhone, don't, isn't there a subscription section in your Apple iPhone, like in the settings? There is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, your Apple ID, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. is that subscriptions that you signed up for on your phone? Mm, I'm thinking probably. I would, I would think. Yeah. So if I sign up for a subscription on my phone, the subscription is probably housed in there. Yeah. What happens whenever my subscription is through some other service? Say, for example, I get a new cell phone at Verizon and Verizon says, hey, for the first year, you get a free subscription to Disney Plus. How do I cancel? Do I cancel Disney Plus with with Disney or do I cancel it with it with Verizon? Well, usually how it goes is you you call one. They tell you to call the other Then that that (laughs) provider tells you to call the the other one back. So, yeah, it it goes around in a circle. Yeah, Yeah. that's frustrating. I mean, and, and especially when you start thinking about like I think they are very, very. Uh, deliberate in terms of what their fees are. I think most of these, these places, their fees are probably under 10 bucks, Mm -hmm. right? Per month. Yeah. So you look at your debit card or your credit card and you say, ah, it's only seven bucks. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just let it go. It's only eight bucks. I'll just let it go. Or maybe it was only eight bucks. I thought maybe that's what I spent it at the convenience store yesterday because I bought some chips and I bought a soda. I mean, so they kind of fly under the radar a little bit, but if Mm -hmm. you think about it, if you had an $8 subscription to a service that you're not using and say you have three of those, that's like 300 bucks a year that that you're wasting on stuff that you're not even using. Man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, you know, to some people, maybe 300 bucks isn't much, but to me, it is something. No, oh, that, that's, that's a utility bill. That's a, that's a present. That's a Christmas present. That's true. Yeah. And, you know, we're recording this right at the beginning of December, so I can guarantee you that there are going to be people out there right now listening to this who have gotten introductory subscription offers mm-hmm. uh, at this time of year. Uh, that, that these places, I, they're hoping that you forget about them. Yeah. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. They're hoping that you forget about them. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so there are apps out there and I think you did some research about different apps and different services out there that you can theoretically use that are, they, they say that they are designed to help locate and eliminate subscriptions that you're not using. Yeah. Some, you know, they will fight one of your subscriptions to try to get you a a lower rate. Or if you're trying to cancel a subscription and you can't, they'll have an agent do it for you. But 
a lot of times there is a fee with that. So, you, you know, well, of course there is. Yeah, exactly. It's another subscription. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supp- I'm supplanting one subscription for another. Yes, is what you're saying? Yes, yes, yes. But in, in in hopes that you're you're going to save money. Yeah. So that's that's the big thing. You got to look at okay, how much can I potentially save, and is getting one of these apps or using one of these services worth it? You know, if so, if the free version doesn't come with whatever feature you're you're looking for. So what kind of fee? So so you said about free. So what? Well, give me an example. Like what would be something that would be part of the free version that isn't necessarily part of the paid version? I think a lot of the free versions have budgeting tools. Um, So Mm -hmm. it may not be something to get rid of a subscription, but it may give you more of a visual of, hey, this is where I'm paying the most money on on this subscription or, Mm -hmm. you know, hey, next year I want to try to save, you know, a hundred bucks a month. Okay, how how are you going to do that? Yeah. Um, So so looking at some of the ones that you looked at, like you looked at like Mint, I think. Yep. Um, You looked at like uh, Pocket Guard, Truebill, which is which is, I think, Rocket Money. Uh, which is a pretty popular one, I think. And and again, you know, just like everything else that we talk about on this podcast, we're we're not endorsing or trying to we're not trying to sway you one way or the other. We're not trying to we're not trying to tell you to use one and we're not trying to tell you not to use one. We're mm-hmm. just trying to put the information out there about how they work and whether or not you can decide for yourself whether or not you think they're they're worthwhile. But I think I'm um, looking down the list here, it looks like most of these come with some sort of a free version to start. Yeah. And then, you know, there's limits on how many subscriptions they'll track. Uh, there's limits on, you know, like this one here, like, you know, this, this one app here, I'm not going to, I'm not, it uh, looks like it's, well, it's under mint, but it's called bill shark. I don't know what that is. It says it keeps 40% of the savings and then you keep 60. So if they save you a hundred bucks, they're taking 40 as their fee yeah. and then you're getting 60 back. So that brings up a question. Once they identify all your subscriptions and you, you're able to pick and choose which ones you want to cancel, I don't need this anymore then, right? I mean, <laughs> theoretically, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think that was that was a complaint I, I did read because some of these apps, you know, you, you have to manually put in your information, your subscriptions and everything for, for them to be able to track it. Mm-hmm. By that point, you know what you're paying for. So why are you using uh, that? <laughs> good point. Uh, and maybe it's so that they maybe they know the secret that your your family member didn't as to how to get in touch with people. Yeah, that, that could be, you know, but you got to pay, you know, I don't think any of these, you know, the free version includes a uh, uh, subscription cancellation yeah. feature, you know, that, that that's premium. So, <laughs> I mean, they get you coming or going. They really do. But I'm looking down here at this this rocket money. So it's like agent driven subscriptions, agent driven bill negotiations. But again, they're keeping anywhere from 30 to 60 percent of the amount that they're saving you. So I think the uh, I think the bottom line is if you can identify some of this stuff on your own, it's probably just as easy for you to cancel your own subscriptions as it is to, to pay another company another fee to try to save money. I agree. You know, that's my take on it. I yeah. mean, I, I don't know. Like, I know that a lot of banks, you know, will offer some sort of free budgeting software as part of their online banking service, mm-hmm. things like that. And, um, you know, maybe that's maybe that's your avenue. You know, you look through there and you you figure out your budget. I think I think the big trick is is just understanding where your subscriptions live and being able to, to cancel them that way. True. So, yeah. So I think that's I think that pretty much gives gives a pretty, pretty good flavor about what we were talking about. I mean, just keep it. Keep an eye on what you're buying, you know, and especially in the holiday season when you're signing up for stuff, you know, put a little reminder in your calendar. You have a if you have a smartphone, put a reminder in your calendar that says, hey, in three months, I got to cancel subscription X. Yeah. You know, if you if you look back and you think to yourself, man, I haven't watched uh, anything on that particular streaming platform in six months. Cancel it. It's not like they're not going to they're not. It's, it's not like once you leave, they're not going to let you back in. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can resubscribe if you want to, but cancel it for now. Save yourself the money. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, any other suggestions that you can think of? Yeah, um, no. Things- Don't just pay your credit card. bill. Yeah. <laughs> look at what you're paying for first. That uh, I mean, that's. That, that's a really good point. I mean, you know, blind paying just, oh, I owe this much. I pay it. Boy, that's that can that can definitely get you into trouble sometimes. And, you know? and it's so, so easy now that, you know, most people will go to paperless billing. You know, you, mm-hmm. it, you don't get that piece of paper in the mail anymore saying, hey, this is how much you owe. You know, you don't open anything. You, you may get an email saying, hey, your statement's ready or something like that. But which is buried in 25,000 other emails exactly. you get every day. Right. Right. Those emails from companies that want you to sign up for a subscription, right? (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. 
All right. Well, you know what, Jeff? If if we don't talk to anybody, have have a happy holiday season. Hey, you as well. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And uh, happy new year. I'm sure we'll, we'll talk again in January. It, it'll be completely fresh and new and, and we'll be subscription free. Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, thanks. And if you haven't listened to uh, the, the the most recent full episode of Bank Chats, uh, make sure you check that out. I think we were talking trusts. Episode five uh, was the one right before here. And uh, we've got um, we've got a good one coming up later this month on budgeting. Uh, so we're going to talk sticking budgeting. with that theme. Yeah, we're sticking with the theme. That's, <laughs> you know, it's the holiday season. We're all overspending. We, we can definitely use some budgeting talk. So we're going to talk some budgeting later on this month with a special uh, expert guest as well. So good deal. All right. Hey, Jeff, take care. Hey, you too, Drew. Thanks. Thank you. This podcast focuses on having valuable conversations on various topics related to banking and financial health. The podcast is grounded in having open conversations with professionals and experts with the goal of helping to take some of the mystery out of financial and related topics as learning about financial products and services can help you make more informed financial decisions. Please keep in mind that the information contained within this podcast and any resources available for download from our website or other resources relating to bank chats is not intended and should not be understood or interpreted to be financial advice. The host, guests, and production staff of Bank Chats expressly recommend that you seek advice from a trusted financial professional before making financial decisions. The host of Bank Chats is not an attorney, accountant, or financial advisor, and the program is simply intended as one source of information. The podcast is not a substitute for a financial professional who is aware of the facts and circumstances of your individual situation. Amerisurf Presents Bank Chats is produced and distributed by Amerisurf Financial Incorporated. Thank you for listening. Please check out our full library of episodes, which can be found on the Amerisurf.com website. You can also download or stream the podcast from your favorite podcast app. 